Hi, I'm Rita Looper, and um, two of the most precious people in my life were stolen from me, my three-year-old son and my one-year-old daughter. The perpetrators of this horrible crime was Child Protective Services. On October 15th of 2010, CPS went to my home where my son was taking a nap with his father. Um, police were breaking down the door, seven of them, with Roy Lynn Biligoti, who was uh, an investigator for CPS. They took my son in his sleeping state, um, refused to let the father wake him at the time that caused severe psychological damage to my son. He had never been in the care of strangers before. Um, he had to have mental health services after that at one and a half years old. Um, Fifteen minutes later, the aforementioned CPS worker came to the hospital where I was visiting my daughter in the NICU unit to see when she was going to be released. Um, it was a Friday, and I was hoping she would not be released till Monday, but um, while I was there finding that out, um, the case manager came in, or the investigator, came in and served me papers stating that she had already taken my son from, his, from our home and was now here to collect my daughter, and handed me papers stating that the reason for removal was immediate need for shelter and protection, which actually is the question. Uh, I have paperwork on that too to show you. Uh, I didn't see my son for or my daughter for 10 days. When I did see them, my son was covered from head to toe in bruises everywhere. He was, um, he was, he was pale and skinny and lethargic, and he was. I was told that he fell out of a crib. Um, he was in the care of a Susan Naylor at the time, and when I questioned why he was in that condition, I was told that I wasn't allowed to ask these questions at the visit. Roy Lynn Biligoti refused to take a report on it. And um, when I left there, which is against federal law, actually, she, she's required to take a report. She's a work, social worker. Um, when I left there, I called the child abuse hotline. Um, I made a report with them. I also found out that child, the child abuse um, hotline was CPS ran it, so I didn't trust that they would, you know, report themselves. So I asked the police. I called the police and asked them to do a secondary um, investigation. They relied on CPS's investigation um, for their report. They never went out and checked on my children at all to see the condition they were in. Um, uh, they were going to be left in that home with Susan Naylor, but by her request, they were actually removed, only because she requested that they be taken away because she didn't want to deal with us reporting on her. Um, they were put into the home of Desiree Allison and her husband, which currently are, a, I believe, filed papers to adopt. They were fighting me for my own children. Um, in the beginning, I was assigned a case manager named Kate Kincaid, and she was working with me for reunification. Um, my case started, like I said, on October 15th, and by February, mid-February, she was uh, going to approve home visits. The week that she was approving home visits, she was replaced with another case manager, uh, Crystal Thompson. Uh, 
that week when I met with Crystal Thompson, she told me that she was going to recommend to the court severance and adoption, which was shocking because switching case managers, going from reunification home visits to severance and adoption by another case manager just didn't make any sense to me. I was complying. I was doing everything I was supposed to do. Uh, I was going into my classes. I was, I was, I was making everything, meetings, uh, visitations, court dates, you know, doing what I was supposed to do. I thought complying was the answer. It's not. Um, my daughter has been hospitalized twice since she's been in the care of the state. She's been hospitalized um, at a couple months old for dehydration and um, she had a urinary, urinary tract infection. And again, when she was nine and a half months old, she was hospitalized. She weighed 11 pounds at nine and a half months old. Um, the diagnosis was failure to thrive and the doctor stated she was severely emaciated. They ran every test on her and they couldn't find any medical reason why. Um, they also even did DNA array, which is against my parental rights. It did not ask me for permission. As a matter of fact, I didn't know my daughter was even in the hospital and by the time I did find out, it was days later. And I, w I went to see her and I wasn't allowed to see her because she was under a protective order. I wasn't even told what the name was to see get into the hospital. I was just sent on a wild goose chase looking for my daughter whose name wasn't on a register anywhere. When I did see her, um, the doctor's reports state that she gained weight by the time she left five days later. There was no medical reason for her to be in that condition. So the only other possible reasons would be neglect or, or no bonding with the caregiver. Either way, I feel they should have been removed from that home then. Um, uh, the medical records were falsif uh, falsified information. Um, the foster stated that she adopted my daughter um, right from the NICU unit, of, which isn't true. I was still the legal parent and the doctors had no idea I existed. Um, I had my attorney, Ann Williams, refuse to submit evidence on my behalf anything that she considered uh, uh, civil related. She said you could file a civil suit against them, but I'm not submitting that evidence because it has nothing to do with your trial. I thought it had everything to do with it. Um, I had ten, 12 witnesses on my witness list, um, 10 of which did not appear, did not show up, and I don't think they were even summoned to appear. The only two that did, only did it because they called in themselves on their own accord. Uh, my case manager was the only one to testify against me on the stand. The um, allegations that the, and testimony from her that they uh, used to sever my rights were based basically on her hearsay. I asked my attorney to make them prove their case and show evidence backing up their allegations and she stated that she was not going to do that. It's a waste of time. And I didn't understand why my attorney would say making them prove their case against me is a waste of time. Is I just don't understand that. It was just like she was in on it, or they are all working together. That's how I feel. Um, I filed with the clerk of the court requests myself and evidence myself since my attorney refused to do these things. And I was reprimanded by the judge, Brian Ishikawa, for doing so. I was told that um, he will hold, hold me in contempt of court if I do that again, if I make any kind of request to the court without going through my attorney who refuses to do it. I've requested jury trial, I've requested uh, medical records, I've requested um, all, all kinds of things. I can't even recall all of them right now. But um, I was re refused all of them continuously. Uh, I also was refused CFTs. I was um, told by Heather Wall of Southwest Human Development, who is the one who is the therapist for my son, that uh, per request of Crystal Thompson, my case manager, to leave us out of the CFTs. So the child family team consisted of the fosters, 
um, the case manager and Heather Wall, the therapist. And this went on for months and I had no idea, neither did the father. They did not tell us that we had a CFTs, which is a Jason Case settlement agreement. Um, the 12 principles, the Arizona vision states that I have the right to that. That's, we are the base of the family team. But we were left out. Um, everything. I can't even think of what else. I mean, I have tons of things. What do you want Congress and your state legislature? I think that the con Congress and the state legislature should stop adoption incentives, first of all. Just that needs to stop. That is basically selling children and giving them a reason why they should keep doing that. Um, I think they should stop this. Uh, there's so many children that need help and they're not getting it and they're too busy, you know, meddling in homes that are loving, caring, nurturing parents that might have a few problems but, you know, are good, good people, love their children and I think their children are just highly adoptable and so they target those, especially low income. I think they need to focus on what, the, what their name means, child protective services, because I don't see any protection going on. I just see them ripping and shredding families apart.